for episode four of this beginner's course, I'm going to be adding a few more materials to the scene, including the rafters, a few structural elements, and just generally fleshing the scene out a little bit more before we get into adding furniture and vegetation and everything like that. So let's jump into it. So last week we added these plywood um, panels to the wall. Um, if you haven't seen that episode, definitely check it out. Um, because we're going to actually be doing some work based off that. So we're going to be duplicating these panels and actually adding it to the ceiling. So just looking at this here, we changed last week, we changed the array distance to match the plywood seams just so that it lines up. And we actually want to do the same thing for the uh, rafters. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go click on here. I'm going to um, copy the negative 12 and I'm going to add that here. And then we're just going to snap that across. Cool. So that's all lining up pretty well. Um, but I did notice that um these are clashing right it's it's pretty straightforward they are butting into each other and then you get all sorts of weird issues like it makes the texture black or whatever so you just definitely don't want something like this happening so what i'm going to do is just click on this one here and i'm going to go up where it says global i'm going to change that to local and then we're just going to drag that out and i'm actually thinking it'd be cool to have the roof cantilever out. This is more of a design decision that I'm just doing on the fly here. And what it means is that we can now click on the, the columns and bring these down so that they actually hold up the, um, the rafters. So we're gonna just do that. So it's looking pretty good. So these elements here, I want to start adding materials to. And I'm going to be using a plugin called Polygon. It's a really good plugin for um, just getting all sorts of different assets. I think you can actually get, um, there's like 100 free assets or something. I've got an affiliate link in the, um, in the description. You can check it out. But I basically use Polygon for almost all of my materials because... It's just awesome. Like it's just a one-click thing, and then you can, you know, you, you can change the albedo tint or whatever. Like it's just has streamlined my process so much. So I use it a lot. So I'm just gonna look at what um, I guess matches with the plywood. And what I'm gonna do before getting into that is just unwrap these. Same process as last time. Check out the other videos if you've forgotten how to do that. Um, unwrap and then we're going to set the texel density and then I'm just going to go into cycles view real quick and I'm going to add a few materials and just see how they balance with the existing materials in the scene. It's really important to do this process um, I guess one at a time just to make sure that what you're adding to the scene doesn't clash too much um, so I'm going to start with this first one that I have and you can see it's like literally instant um, No need to like this no matter what project you use no matter what you create as long as you've got polygon installed and you've downloaded some materials um, You've got all of these at your whim, so it's really really good and I use it for all my professional work as well um, I think that's, oh, there's actually a plywood material too. I, I even could have used that for this. So I'm just got literally going through and applying a few of my different wood materials. And But what I'm actually thinking is maybe it would be cool for this one just to do black. Like literally paint these black. So I'm going to go into my shader editor. And I'm going to change this to... Um, the black as a material. Um, nah, stuff it. 
So <laughs> that was just a little experiment. I think the closest one is probably going to be this one here. Yeah. So I like this one, this veneer white. What's it called? Um, random matched 01. That one's probably the closest that aligns with the plywood that I have. So literally you can see it's like one click and it's done. But it's not completely done yet. What I'm going to do is apply the modifiers on both. And then I'm just going to go and unwrap again so that we get textures that are not like exactly the same. Because if you use an array modifier, all the UVs will be exactly the same. So all the textures will look exactly the same. But we actually want to create variation um, that will allow it to seem far more natural. So that's looking pretty good. Um, and then lastly, what we're going to be doing is copying the um, the plywood and we're actually going to clad it on the ceiling as well. So let's just get out of cycles mode and we're going to do that right now. Now I just want to double check. It looks like on this side, I may actually need to adjust all of this to match the um, I guess offset that I created you know how all these beams uh, the, all the columns and um, rafters line up I actually want to do the same so that it's all kind of working well together so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just snap all of that to that midpoint there so that these line up nicely I hope that makes sense um, and then I'm just going to um, copy all of these plywood sheets and then duplicate it and then I'm going to move it away and what I'm going to do actually just initially is I'm going to just move it up five meters click off it at, just because I want to know what this angle is so this is 15 degrees so let's highlight all of these and we're going to go R X and we're going to go 15 that's not 15 degrees. Um, hmm. Okay, what I'm going to do is go into orthographic mode. And then I'm just going to hold control and drag as I rotate. So you can see I kind of, when I set up the angle of this roof, I did it like a whole degree. So it would have been like... So it says it's 75 degrees, so that's a good way to do it. Um, sometimes like when you're working with modeling and stuff, it won't actually keep the, the proper angle um, for a few different reasons. It doesn't really matter. But um, yeah, if, you, if you're designing with logic, you should be able to snap it and it should be able to meet what you originally made, if that makes any sense. <laughs> So we've just added all these plywood sheets, which are literally just duplicated. We're going to go back into cycles mode. And let's see how it looks. Cool. It's looking good. It is quite dark, but we don't need to worry about that. That's more of a sun angle thing. Um, so let's, let's just zoom around real quick. Um, okay. Cool. So I just want to copy all of these again. Because it didn't add it to the other area as well. So let's just copy that. And we're going to snap it to this point, And then we're going to move it 0 0.005. And then to this roof, we're going to add the same black material. So that you see that beautiful negative joint there so you can see that how that seamlessly folds over that's exactly what we want and then what I'm going to do just because even even though we won't actually see it um, what I'm going to do is just duplicate these choice uh, rafters and I'm just going to line it up so 0 0.05 yep bang on the money okay so let's go back in and then you can see we actually need to um, copy these down, oh, 
let's undo that. Let's just copy these. Remember, we're still in local view, so we can actually copy an array along and uh, copy and move along the angle that it is set at, which is really useful. And I'm just going to move this 0 0.05 minus 0 0.05. Oh. Um, minus 0 0.005 because that's the gap that we've got at the moment. That's kind of what we're consistently getting. And then I'm just going to delete all of that so that it lines up nicely with there. So I want kind of, um, I want the roof to stop where that last piece of plywood, or I guess where the, um, where the rafter stops. So we're just going to delete these ones here. Cool. So it's looking pretty, pretty nice. Getting some nice moody light coming in. And then the last thing I'm going to do right now is just work on these beams here. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, so it's going to be the exact same process. Um, I'm going to, uh, actually it, to be honest, it feels not, not really chunky enough. So on the Y axis, I'm going to make this point two seven so it's going to be a 270 beam and then i'm ju i'm just designing on the fly right that's the beauty about blender i'm gonna just line that up with actually let's make this 0 0.19 190 let's line that up with where that plywood finishes because I'm, I'm always trying to f make the design have some sort of logic to it that's really important to me um and then um so we're going to move this uh, 9, 8, 90, 95, uh, 0.95, nope, 0 0.095. And then let's just see, I think I want this to stop at the plywood um, height. And then I want this beam to carry across, which is perfect. So this beam here, this is going to be another piece of joinery. And then this is going to be holding that up. So this is kind of the, the truss, if you will. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go unwrap these again. Apply transformations. Unwrap. Let's go into Texel Density. Set the TD. Same process as before. And we're just going to go Veneer, White, Oak, Random Matched, 01. Uh, white oak and then here's a little trick if you've got multiple selected it'll only apply the material to one but what you can do in the material panel is come over here to material specials and then we're going to go copy material to selected and then you've just saved yourself a bunch of time cool so let's go into cycles mode real quick and let's just see how things are looking So it's pretty good so far. I think uh, it's a it's a good point to end at. We've got um, you know we've got the rafters with their material. We've got plywood on the ceiling. We've given all of the structure actual material. Um, next week we're going to be looking at the glazing. We're going to be fleshing out the windows. Anything that has I guess a little bit more detail to it, we're going to be doing. And then furthermore, we're going to be looking at the um, outdoor furniture, some planting, just really making the environment feel nice and um, lively. So if you guys have enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I don't want you to miss anything else that you might find useful. And also check out my Instagram at Oliver Higgins Architecture and you can see what kind of work I do and produce as a professional using Blender. So we'll see you guys next week. Cheers.